Welcome to this video. We're going to take a look and recap some really useful algebraic manipulations, which are super, super wonderful to have just at our fingertips. And we're going to make sure we see this uh, clearly. It's in a video. You can pause, you can stop, you can go back, listen again to what's being said, what's being done. Okay, the first thing we're going to look at is how to very, very quickly isolate a variable. If you tell me, hey, isolate g in this equation, I can do this almost instantly with no thought at all, like that. How do I do this so fast, and how can you do it that fast too? The first thing is to remember, isolate means we have to get it all by itself on one side of the equation. But we can't just get it on one side, it has to be in the numerator. That's really important. So we're going to start out with an easier example and then work our way up. Let's say we want to isolate g like I just did. First, we look at the other things that have to go away so that g is all by itself. g is already in the numerator, so the things that we have to get rid of are the d, the e squared, and the f. How do I get rid of the d? Well, first we have to remember the d is actually in the numerator. It's as though we have d over 1 times e squared g over f. Okay. So d really is part of the numerator, because we could just take the d over 1 and combine that fraction with the second fraction. And this is very different from another thing that you may think. You might think, well, maybe we should distribute d to the top and bottom. But look at what happens if we do that. We have d e squared g on the top when we distribute up, and when we distribute down we have df, and the d's cancel. If we distribute to the top and bottom, it's as though there's no d there at all, and that's clearly not true. The d is out front. Here I am, right? So we can't distribute to the top and bottom. That's wrong. Instead, it's as though d is just in the numerator. Okay, if d is in the numerator, how do we get something to go away which is in the numerator? Here's what you do. If you want to get rid of d so that we can proceed toward isolating g, you have to multiply both sides by 1 over d. And now the d's will cancel out, and it's as though they weren't there at all on the right side. But the d popped up over here. And we combine the first fraction with the second fraction. The way we combine that is we just take the d and we add it right over here. Okay, so we got rid of the d. g is what we're isolating, remember. g is the what we're isolating. Let's get rid of the other thing in the numerator, the e squared. To get rid of it, you multiply by 1 over e squared. You have to do that to both sides. So the 1 over e squared joins up, whoops, the 1 over e squared joins up with this fraction, right? We add a 1 into the numerator, we add an e squared into the denominator. And what do we have now? It's this. Okay. The next thing, and then on the right side, the e squareds go away because e squared over e squared is equal to 1. Okay. The next thing is to get rid of the f. So we multiply both sides by f, because now we'll have an f in the numerator and the denominator, and f over f is just 1 over 1. So the f's go away. It was in the denominator. We multiplied by that, and now we have an extra f coming into the numerator right there. So, how did we do this? Anything that was in the numerator, right, like e squared or d, we just erased from the right side and we added into the denominator of the other side. Anything that was in the denominator with our g, like f, we just erased it and we added it into the numerator of the other side. 
So let's take another example. Because this is such a big example, I'm going to rewrite it again. What we want to isolate, let's say, is M12. Right? So the first thing I'm going to do is rewrite everything that's on the left currently. So what do we have right now on the left side? We have a G in the numerator, a 4 pi, we have a T sub 1, 2 squared, we have an R2, 3 squared, an M1, 3. Okay, so so far I haven't changed left or right side yet. Now I'm going to find everything in the numerator on the right side. After all, I want to get this by itself, so I need to get rid of K, R1, 2 squared, and X and Y. Each of those is separate. have to get rid of each. So of those four things, which are in the numerator? K and that. So when I get rid of them, they will move to the denominator of the other side. So the K then would be down here, and the R1, 2 squared is going to be down there too. And then I can just sort of erase them from the right side. So I don't put a K here. Whoops, I erase it. So I've taken care of the K and the R12 squared. Now I have to take care of the X and the Y. Those are in the denominator, so they'll simply come into the numerator of the left side. And what's left? Just our M12. Now what if we have something like this? And let's say we're trying to isolate R, okay? We're trying to isolate R12. The first thing we check for is, is it in the numerator? And yes, it is. Wait, no, it's below the fraction line. That's in the denominator, clearly. So what do we do? We get it into the numerator. Anything in the denominator of one side can be simply moved into the numerator of the other side and erased. So now I've gotten R12 squared into the numerator. Then isolate R12 squared. What's with it right now? FG. So we have to get rid of it. How do we get rid of FG? It's in the numerator of the left, so it's going to go into the denominator of the right. It switches from numerator to denominator when you move it to the other side. OK. Now I've solved for R12 squared. I've isolated or solved for R12 squared. How do I find R12? How do I get rid of the squared? There's two ways. One way is you can square root both sides. That's what we're used to doing. Or the other way is you can use some fancy exponent tricks. Raise both sides to the 1 half power. How do you handle 2? the 2 here, and the 1 half, those are both exponents, and they multiply by each other. So you have r, 1, 2, raised to the power of 2 times 1 half, and that's just 1. And we don't write exponents of 1. And what's on the other side? We have g, m1, m2, over fg, to the 1 half power, or square rooted. So here we are, we've arrived at our final trick. Let's say we have something like this, okay? It's possible, then, to flip these things around. I can bring A to the right side, but when I do, it has to go into the denominator. And I could bring D over to the left side, and when I bring it over, it flips into the numerator. So it's possible to flip these things around, okay? So look at this. I'm going to put up... I'm going to put up other things that this is equivalent to or equal to, or uh, equates with. If this is true, if, if i is true, then i i is also true. I'm going to bring d over. So I brought d from the right to the left, and it went into the numerator. Now I can take this i i statement and modify it further. I'm going to take a and move it to the other side, and it's going to go down to the denominator and I'll have D over B equals C over A. So look at what's happened here. I've flipped these two from how they were originally. 
And likewise, you're also allowed to flip B and C if you want to. Like that. So the last thing is this. Let's say we have m1 over r13 squared is equal to m2 over r23 squared. And we want to get all of the things that are squared together on one side. Right? How do we do that? Well, I'm going to bring that into the numerator of the other side. And m1 is going to go into the denominator of the other side. And it's going to look like this. If I want, I could then square root both sides. And each of these things under the radical can come outside of the radical. That can, and so can this. But the, the fraction is preserved. The reason they both come out is because they're both squared. So what does it look like in the end? We just have r23 over r13 is equal to the square root of m2 over m1.